Against the Stream is a Buddhist meditation center where we practice the teachings of Buddha, Four Noble Truths, Eightfold Path. And uh, one of the core teachings of, of Buddha and Buddhism is uh, the importance of community, that the mindfulness and the uh, wisdom and, and compassion that we're trying to develop is relational. All of it's about relationships and about how we talk to each other and how we listen to each other and how we support each other on the path. And um, so there's three refuges. We take refuge in Buddha, which not for me, it's not about the statues or the historical person, but our own potential that each one of us has a Buddha within us that we can awaken, that we can... <clears throat> know directly that Buddha is your your own potential rather than some sort of religious thing, that it just means to be awake. Buddha is, to be, to, to be awake means to see clearly like what's happening in this world, what's happening inside of us, what's happening outside, and not only seeing clearly, but if you're awake, you respond appropriately. And the appropriate responses are compassion to all of the pain. And the appropriate response is non-attachment to all of the joy and pleasure, not clinging to it and suffering about it. And uh, the appropriate response is not taking everything so fucking personally all of the time and knowing that this is just the human condition and it's fucking hard. And it calls for a lot of compassion and it calls for a lot of forgiveness and uh, that for me that's that's what a buddha is somebody who's uh, responding with compassion and responding with non-attachment and understanding what is personal and what we're responsible for and what's not personal and it's just the human condition and, and that we live in a world of ignorance and not suffering so much about how much ignorance is is running shit here because it's the norm it's the status quo that's why we call uh this place against the stream and it's the Buddhist teaching, which is uh, in order to awaken, we have to go against greed, against hatred, against delusion. And that that's the status quo. It's the norm in this world to be asleep, to be selfish and fear based and greed based and ignorant. Just look at, you know, turn on the television. You don't even have to turn on the television, take a walk down the street and you'll just encounter a whole bunch of ignorance outside. And then if you look at your own mind, you'll see a whole bunch of ignorance inside bunch of confusion. And then the meditative practices, the renunciation, the work that we do to try to wake up. I'm being long-winded about, we take refuge in our own potential to do that, and then we take the action. It's not a faith to base, but we take the action. And then we take, and, and that action is into practicing the Dharma. We take refuge in the Dharma. We have a map. These four noble truths, this eightfold path, the Brahma, the heart practices of forgiveness, of compassion. Tonight I'm going to talk about generosity as uh, not an idea, but an action, service. And we take refuge in, like, we, we know what to do. So stoked that we know what to do. <laughs> the first half of my life, I was just suffering, and I didn't know what to do about it except for smoke crack, like, and that took the edge off. <laughs> like, got, I got loaded for, you know, like, and that took the edge off of my suffering, but it certainly didn't. In the long run, it created more suffering, and it certainly wasn't any sort of solution. And the Dharma is the solution. Here is the treatment program for the suffering of being a human being. Here's how we can end suffering. We take refuge in that. And the third thing is was where I was starting and where I'm trying to get to is we take refuge in community, is that we need each other. We need a unified, connected uh, group of people to practice with and, and people who are interested in kindness and in compassion and in mindfulness and in wisdom. And we need to do it together. And so Against the Stream really is a place where we can connect because you can meditate at home all by yourself. You don't need me to meditate. It's nice to have somebody to 
teach us how to meditate, but we can learn that on the podcasts and read the books and on all of that. But there's something about gathering. One of the things that the Buddha said was that the uh, the Buddhism, the Sangha, uh, would continue as long as we got together regularly to discuss the Dharma. As long as groups of people continue to gather and connect, that this is what will support Buddhism. Uh, continuing. And here we are 2,600 years ago in this unbroken lineage of people getting together to practice meditation and to support each other in it and, and to connect to uh, community. All of that was um, to encourage you to take a moment before we meditate to connect. Introduce yourself to some of the people in the room you don't know. <laughs> Take a moment to find a way to sit that's sustainable. Adjust your posture so that it's upright, spine upright. The rest of the body relaxed around the upright skeleton. Soften your eyes, let them be gently closed. Release any unnecessary tension that you can release in the shoulders, the jaw. Establishing an inner attitude of friendliness, of kindness, of patience. The intention to be accepting and forgiving of your own mind and body. With this Friendly attitude, bring your attention to the sensations in the body. As you breathe in, feel the sensations that the breath creates. And as you exhale, soften further, soften the belly. Relax into the present time experience of the body sitting Breathing, feeling. In this human experience, we have six sense doors. You can bring mindfulness to all of them, mindfulness of hearing, and smelling and tasting, of seeing. Even with the eyes closed, there's still some consciousness of sights, color, shape, perhaps even images. The sense door of feeling of the body, physical sensations from head to toe. And the sixth sense is that of the heart and mind, thoughts and emotions. Planning and remembering, hoping and fearing. We begin our mindfulness practice, non-judgmental, present-time awareness, with the first foundation, which is the body, letting the other sense doors, sounds, and thoughts be in the background. We bring our full attention to what the body is experiencing right now. The Buddha gave a simple instruction. He said, breathing in, know that you're breathing in. Breathing out, know that you're breathing out.
feel the rhythm of the breath. Allow the body to breathe its own natural rhythm. No need to control or manipulate your experience. But receive it. Mindfulness receives. Mindfulness knows the sensations created by each breath. And of course, our attention gets drawn back into our habit of paying attention to what our mind is doing, thinking, worrying, craving, remembering, judging, whatever the mind is doing. We don't have to stop the mind. You can choose to let it be in the background, like the cars passing by on Lincoln, thoughts just passing by. Bring our attention back to the breath over and over. Connect, sustain, reconnect as many times as you need to.
Remember the intention to be friendly, no matter what your mind is doing, your body is experiencing. Compassion is always the right response to pain, your pain, the pain of others. And soften into your discomfort rather than hating it or trying to avoid it. instructions expand from the narrow focus on the breath to a more inclusive 
awareness of your whole body, this body which is the four elements. You can become mindful of the air element and heat and earth and solidity. And that this body is predominantly water element, almost 80% fluid. can scan our attention through the body that we're so often identified with as self and see what's truly here, what part of this is me. And there is skin and bones. And there are organs, tissues, muscle, blood, this body breathes all by itself, the heart beats all by itself. The more we pay attention, the more we come to understand the impermanent nature of all of the phenomena, all of the sensation in the body. Whatever is happening is in a process of change, arising and passing, appearing and dissolving of sensation. We can open to the other sense doors of the mind and heart, smell and taste, sound and sight. Present time, inclusive, non judgmental awareness, no such thing as a distraction, because whatever is happening is happening now. They're just thoughts. Motion, sensation, sounds. And all of our experience is perceived as being pleasant or unpleasant or neutral. Every sound, every thought, every sensation, even the breath itself. There's a liking, disliking. Experiences feel agreeable or disagreeable, pleasant or unpleasant. And some 
are neutral, neither pleasant nor unpleasant. Bring this into your meditation, into your investigation of your own mind and heart, breath and body. And this is where we have the opportunity to begin meeting our pain with compassion rather than aversion. Even if it's just the pain of sitting still for a few minutes, just discomfort, an opportunity to develop mercy and compassion for your own discomfort. Remember to soften around any discomfort. Remember to observe the process of thoughts arising and passing in your mind rather than getting so involved in the content. The mind 
has a mind of its own. It continues to think. You don't need to make that a problem. But you can also just come back to the here and now, observing thoughts rather than indulging in them. For the last couple of minutes of the sitting, I invite you to engage your mind to reflect on what generosity means to you. What place in your life does giving hold? Of being of service, of donating, of sharing your time and energy or resources with others.